What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today, I'm checking out Horizon Zero Dawn's new DLC known as The Frozen Wilds, which is out November 7th for $14.99. So what's more fun than rejoining the cast of characters from the original game and continuing to explore a world where strapping a futuristic engine manifold to your face somehow makes you the leader? That's right, pretty much nothing. So put on your cold metal armor, grab your electrified cattle prods, and let's see how it did, shall we? Now, this title was provided by Sony, so as always, that means I purchased an additional code that I'll give to patrons at the end of this month, so my hard-earned cash is at risk like everyone else's. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Horizon Zero Dawn The Frozen Wilds, Mount Sorta Doom, the importance of manscaping, and a world where everyone fears headbutts. Graphics are at first. I think one thing to remember is that Horizon really rarely faltered originally, and while having a couple wonky animations or weird detection issues, it is and should be considered a high watermark for the PS line of consoles, and Frozen Wilds adds to that. This isn't just DLC patched into a side mission in the game either. Well, Actually, it is actually sort of that, but what I mean is there's far more work here than actually meets the eye at first glance. New camera animations for Frozen Wilds specific conversations makes everything appear just a bit more fluid, but one of the most noticeable improvements here is the amazing additions to the game and the reworking of the snow in the Frozen Wilds areas. This is a place that would make Dr. Freeze put on a jacket, so the changes only happen in the Frozen Wilds areas, but what you see is a huge improvement over the original location, snow, a glittering, swirling mass that is absolutely detracting from long-range vision at times, but also it's the interaction with the ground that is almost mind-blowing here. Gorilla did heavy work on a dynamic interaction layer on the snow, and not only do you see Aloy bending just right and working through heavy drifts, you see the tracks in massive deformable locations. Looking back over places that you've battled, looks like the world has the worst case of bedhead you've ever seen, with the snow pummeled down where robotic and fleshy enemies have all hit a little too hard. And it shows a discreet level of detail that doesn't present itself with a, hey, look at this kind of presentation, but more of a, wait, what just happened kind of moment. Or following an enemy through the snow if you play HUDless can be fantastic as you can follow them for a great distance. Or you see where a battle just happened between two enemies and you can actually be able to see where one walked off a bit right before dying. It is incredible stuff. Now once again though, to me, it's the monster designs that I adore in Horizon Zero Dawn and here again in the Frozen Wilds. One of the first new machines you're going to be introduced to is the very mundane named Control Tower. Sort of like a Sunflower, Optimus Prime, and that kid in high school that always liked to egg everybody else on had a baby. This thing's sole job is to basically just sit there spewing out hate venom in the form of a blue energy that aggravates, heals, and alerts the nearby creatures all at the same time. The fact that it looks spectacular while doing so is just sort of a bonus. Or some of the other creatures hidden or noticed a little bit later in their unique animations, it adds a very cool feel to the game where things don't feel like they're just tacked on like DLC, but more like they've been here the entire time. And that's something that you notice right from the start. Frozen Wilds does an excellent job mending the original game and the DLC together, and Gorilla did all they could to actually make this area like the advanced stage of Permafrost Death Zone that it is, but the fact is it all feels like one concentrated whole. Now, when it comes to performance, nothing has changed here. This is the same setup that the original game had, which means on the PS4, you're looking at 1080p and 30 FPS. And on the PS4 Pro, you have that choice to favor resolution or favor performance. When it comes down to it, performance does lock it at 30 FPS, where favoring resolution, sometimes you're gonna see that waver a little bit. Overall, both of them completely playable. This is a game that looks fantastic when it comes to consoles. Sound, music, and voice. I've got to find Maria. And to do that, I need to talk to her apprentice, who followed the river north. Outlander, wait, wait a moment. That weapon of yours, Outlander, that spear, I can see the blue light upon it. This? It was made by an acquaintance of mine. Ah, a shaman. Uh, no. More of a tinker? And you know what? Let's do voice first. Now, building on the almost uniform excellence of the first, the voices here are well done with a massive grumbling tribal leader, probably being my favorite of the new inclusions. 
That being said, there are still some rough patches. For instance, there's a couple characters who break into strange moments where slang drops and it can feel like you showed up late to the rehearsals and someone said, ah, you know what, that's good enough. For instance, there's one character you meet about midway through that collects pigments and who knows, maybe she's been huffing her product for too long, but her delivery and some of the wording seemed really odd compared to the other characters in the game. But I think those are small quibbles for an otherwise excellent delivery. And we even see some improvements in Aloy herself, where in the original, there were those odd moments where you're like, that character's been spent a little too much time in the methadone clinic. Here we see a good deft hand on improving on any of those imperfections in the original, and I think it elevates the whole because of that. And of course that brings us to sound, and it is really good. It doesn't really matter if you're being stunned by a creature's sonic mating call or you're having your shield disengaged by the low pulse of one of the control towers, just prior, of course, to every creature in the area, making a beeline to your spot like it's last call at the human-serving chuck wagon buffet line. It just works incredibly well, and I can't count the number of times that discrete layering of atmospheric sounds were impacted by objects, enemies, or nearby important elements that informed me of what was going on around the game world. Or the fact that sometimes in the heat of things, when you have 14 metallic demon creatures all bent on having you for their holiday turkey, you can react just due to the sound of the enemy leaping off the ground in their attack animation. And you know, as I've explained before in reviews, sound can be a third arm, especially in hard situations. And that coupled with the way Horizon handles battle, its importance can't be ignored in the experience. It's a very well done sound. If any complaints I have, it is still that it is a little tight on its sound stage and its separation, but overall, it still works really well. And of course, that brings us to music. Now, this continues to be excellent, and it's hard to discern what's new for this game and what isn't, especially as the game intertwines this location right in the middle to the late game from the original. I absolutely adore the fact that Horizon continues to have an excellent interaction between analog and the synthetic. One moment you're climbing a sheer rock face and there's these light percussions driving you on and it reminds you of poorly made drums and just terrible questionable animal skins. And the next you're fighting off enemies all to the tune of this really ominous deep throb that's half coming from the creatures, which is sort of their robotic song, and half from the soundtrack. It is really well done stuff. Also, I gotta say kudos to particular elements of woodwinds here. There are a number of interspersed bits with the woodwinds that instantly elevate these moments of introspection or investigation, and I really like that. I will say this, I'm a bit surprised once again that we have some scenes with no real music accompaniment at all, and that's a bit of a surprise because while your mileage may vary, I noticed and it felt a little bit emotionally vacant whenever sometimes two characters talk. So, speaking about talking, let's discuss gameplay and a bit about the story. So, Aloy can get this mission started pretty much smack dab at the middle to the end of a normal game of Horizon Zero Dawn. And while you can go to the location pre-30th level, it's pretty much going to be Death Incarnate for you. Because Frozen Wilds, while a nice heady piece of frozen real estate and very fun to explore, is packed to the gills with enemies. Aloy, of course, finds out about it, sprints to it, and finds out that an evil force known as the Daemon has been corrupting the machines in the area, making them more difficult, more aggressive, and just more bad guyish. And of course, like every bad guy, they've been kicking the shit out of somebody, and this is the Bannock tribe that we're talking about. And Aloy decides, you know what, I'm going to return the favor. So you end up traipsing from end to end of this location many times. And I got to say this, even higher level folks are going to find some difficulty simply due to the earlier mentioned towers I talked about, where they take the normal enemies and make them a bit harder. But even later on, you're going to start facing the small handful of new creatures that are in the game, and let me tell you, they do mix this up a bit. Also, to keep the gameplay fresh, Gorilla has added the ability to mod your spear and also a new skill tree known as the Traveler. And I have to say, it is a really odd add. It's things like being able to pick up items on the ground while on mounts, repair some creatures with metal shards, and add spots for more resources. Strangely enough, the one truly useful skill is the very last one, which is the ability to leap off your mount and attack enemies. And I'm not going to lie, it looks cool going 40 miles an hour and slamming into a giant robotic ostrich with your spear. But in the end, it actually feels a little bit like everybody sat down and said, hey, remember that idea we had for the main game? And then threw them all into this skill tree. It helps that this isn't in-game DLC, though, as these changes will work everywhere in the game. But it still feels a little bit weird. Now, the game also offers a small number of things that you can purchase with something called Blue Gleam, which is a new currency. One nice thing about this is that some of the new items are things like armor, which actually look very fitting for the ice cold locations Aloy finds herself in. And I love that we finally get that feeling of form, meat, and function here because, sure, we haven't all experienced life until we've taken a piss in the snow while wearing armor that's like a reverse radiator. But finally seeing somebody wearing thick, burly, fur-based armor in the cold actually just sort of looks cool. Of course, when you add that look to the new animations for working through the snow, it's hard not to feel like a futuristic Clan of the Cave Bear vibe is sort of taken over your game. 
Also, my hat's off to Guerrilla Games for making sure that the side content is actually meaningful here. We all know that game we know and love where the main story is poignant and meaningful, but the side quests feel like someone used a web-based choose-your-own-adventure creator to make them. Go here, make me a quilt. Go there and destroy a village. Now, while some of these do happen in Frozen Wilds, their rewards and reasoning are elevated just a little bit to something closer to the side quests in, say, The Witcher. And while we've seen a lot of games do that recently, for example, Assassin's Creed Origins, here the fact that I've even mentioned this game with Witcher should show you that there's a large degree of attention focused on the side quests. And that, to me, is actually where Frozen Wilds excels, even in current company. I mean, take for instance Assassin's Creed Origins. It stuns in the complexity of its creations and that layering down of these various elements that create a panorama of activity around the gamer. For me, Frozen Wild stakes his visual cues more in the exacting replication of a particular place and feel. And while the original did have us jumping from subterranean layers mixed with dinosaurs and Tron to pastoral fields and even a bit of the Winter Wonderland originally, Frozen Wilds doubles down on one particular element, and really not since Shivering Isles have I enjoyed the exploration in a DLC or expansion as much as the original like I did here. Fun factor. You know, from start to finish, this was incredible fun, and while I may not be in love with Horizon's combat system, and at times the game does say, hey, you know what, I got an idea, let's throw Aloy into a small area with four massive creatures, so half the battle looks like you're the slowest mover in a rock concert trampling. In the end, the new weapons, locations, and systems make up for the small missteps, because make no mistake, those issues are few and far in between, and all the other in-between times. Frozen Wilds is a continuation of a journey begun in Horizon and continued with excellence here. It's always nice to purchase a game and see that DLC that's coming for it is meaty and, well, also available without you having to get four types of currency to trade them in for diamonds so you can get a nice pair of emerald shoes for your magic user. It's the length of many full games, and while using the excellence of the original as a stepping stone, Aloy and company see an adventure that branches out the storyline, alters a number of actual systems in the game or improves them, and does so with an attention to detail to make it all feel as seamless as it possibly can. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale, and this is, of course, a buy. The original game was excellent in its own right, and we see some various elements that continue from there that I don't necessarily love, but we see other elements that are improved. Will Frozen Wild suddenly make you like the original game? No, not necessarily, but it does improve some of the elements, and it's a new experience with a bit of new items, some new armor, weapons, and a skill tree that might have something there that maybe bothered you when playing the original game, so it's certainly something to look at. So that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Make sure to check out Twitter or Patreon. Being a patron is one of the ways that I continue to give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.